I, I'm enjoying doing what I'm doing, and it's something I'll continue doing uh, for the rest of my life, I suspect. So it, it's it's a it, it's a good feeling to have that kind of connection to uh, uh, something in life at, at at this stage in retirement. I took some art courses in college, although I was an English major, uh, which is what I wound up teaching. The art interest has always been there. So it, uh, once I retired, it was a, an easy transition to uh, when I was looking for something that I wanted to do with the, the new time I had in my life. Um, art was, was that that I turned to. What I learned about pastel painting was that uh, it's a very forgiving medium. It allows me to make mistakes and not worry about them because I can eliminate them. I can get rid of them simply by erasing them and continue with the piece I'm working on. If that happened in, in oil painting, I would have to scrape the paint off the, the uh, board or the, the canvas that I was working on and, and sort of start all over again. In pastel painting, I don't, you don't have to do that. And so I can be very particular and fulfill that need in me. It's just, that's who I am. And if I make a mistake, I don't worry about it. I can just make an adjustment and cover it over and, and things look normal and I can come out with a piece that I am very comfortable with. People notice that my work had such detail. How could you get those little lines? You know, it was a common question. And so I showed them the pastel pencils that I was using. I said, well, I use these, which allow me to, to really draw fine lines. I think it's generally accepted in the, in the pastel world that pencils, pastel pencils are just like anything else. As long as it's made of pastel, it's a pastel. My studio is a repository for uh, anything I have an interest in. I like to work with my hands, and not necessarily in an artistic way, but I have a lot of things there that I can work on. I will go there to start painting and see something on, on my desk. I say, oh, you know, I need to do that. And so I'll take a short period of time and, and do whatever that is. I think uh, my style is that I'm better off if I work at something and I, I, can, I can concentrate for, for hours on end, but I can also stop that and, and maybe it comes from being a teacher. The bell rings, the class is done, and then the next class comes in. So, you know, I'm used to those kinds of breaks in my life, I guess. I usually work in pieces on a particular artwork, meaning that I'll, I'll uh, want to do all the background work and then that sort of comes to the end and I'll, I'll want to work on what's in the foreground. So painting divides itself often neatly into units like that. Every week I go to, to, from Leiden to Greenfield, not every day, but probably three, four times a week. And in that trip, to Greenfield, I pass a barn that is on a farm and it has a cupola. The barn has a cupola on it and it's falling apart. But it's a gorgeous looking cupola. The, the person who built it put more into it than usual. It had roundness to it. It had curves in it. Uh, and usually cupolas are, are pretty square. You know, triangular, rectangular, and that's it. I just took a liking to it. And uh, so this barn in Greenfield that I passed became the first one that I did in that smaller format.
you know, I can only say that it's probably Frank Lloyd Wright speaking to me. You know, that it, somehow that, that all got thrown in together. And uh, I just felt that I, I should do something like that. I guess because I'm a, a realist painter, I, I would want to hope that, that the, the viewer sees something uh, in my paintings that they've seen before. And they may not have seen the exact object, but it somehow would have a familiar look to them, which would mean that they're comfortable with it. One of the things I'm thinking of is, is trying to become uh, an abstract painter of pastels. Uh, and that's not something I can get to easily. Uh, I'm, I'm so engrossed in being a realist that uh, it, um, it's abstract is the opposite. And so I, I need to find a, a, a way to bridge the gap from being a realist painter to being an abstract painter. And so it's a, uh, and, and I think that will allow me maybe to be more creative uh, in a lot of ways and, and not uh, bring so much of the intellectual side into it.